What's up guys, I wanted to give you guys a full breakdown review of this Blue Eddy AC180 portable power station because I know there's a lot of power stations out there. There's a lot of them at this range in the 1000 watt range. This one has a battery capacity of 1,152 watts. I'll show you guys some of the things that this can power. I'll run some tests for you guys and then I'll give you guys my review at the end. So let's get the video. So here's the power station up close just so you guys can see it a little better. As you guys can see, it's got some cool details on it. I mean, it's got this kind of textured front right here which I think just looks really nice. You know, the appearance doesn't really matter as far as the performance goes of a power station, but I feel like it is nice to just have something that looks nice. And this definitely looks nice in my opinion. It's pretty awesome. But I just want to show you guys all around it and I'll talk to you guys about some of the internal components. So first off, this is a LFP or lithium iron phosphate battery, which is some of the most reliable power stations out there right now. A lot of, you know, power stations in this range or the big brands all use LFP batteries because they're very long lasting batteries. And this one actually has 3,500 plus battery life cycles, which is pretty awesome because you know, if you were to use, basically that means if you were to use this thing every single day, um, it's gonna be able to last longer than 10 years. And that's just to degrade down to 80% around there. And so most of us aren't gonna be using it every day. And so this should last, you know, even longer than 10 years, which is pretty awesome. You know, if you're gonna be investing in something like this, it's nice to know that it's gonna last a long time, which is pretty awesome. You also get a five year warranty as well, which is also a nice thing that they have, you know, to make sure that you're able to use it for a long time. But going over here on the front, one thing I like about this is pretty much everything is on the front of this power station. Um, the only thing you really have on the side is over here you have your different charging outlets, which we'll go over there in a second. But pretty much all of your outlets, things you're gonna be using to charge up and power are all gonna be on the front, which I think is super nice because some power stations out there, you know, you have like your DC outlets on the back and then you have your outlets on the front. This one has all of them on the front, which I think is super nice. But going over the battery capacity, as you can see right here on the front, this is, has a battery capacity of 1,152 watts. It's so pretty big, this is gonna be able to power essentially most of the basic items in your house, you know, refrigerators, TVs, things like that. You have a max AC output of 1800 watts and it can surge or peak up to 2700 watts, so quite a bit as well. We'll talk about that here in a little bit once you do tests and stuff like that. But right here you can see it's got four AC outlets. There's some other power stations in this range that will have six AC outlets. This one only has four, but you know, most of the time you're not gonna be using six AC outlets anyways. So four I think is perfectly fine. And you get four USB-A's as well. All of them are five volt, three amp USB-A's and then you get a hundred watt fast charging USB-C. It would be nice if they included two USB-C's just because you know, then you could fast charge your phone and fast charge you know, your laptop, something like that. But, you know, there's a lot of different outlets here. You could just plug it into, you know, the AC outlet as well. And I, I think there's no problem as well. But then over here, you also have your DC outlet. So you have your 12 volt, 10 amp, you know, car outlet right here as well that you can plug in. And then right here on the top, you have a DC input. So this is actually how you're going to be able to charge this up with solar. So you can actually charge this up via an outlet, solar, or your car. And I'll show you guys the charging outlets on the back. But this one, you can actually charge it with solar um, it's pretty awesome. It does come with a couple different cables. So you get your cable right here for your outlet charger, your AC input, and then you get your car charger outlet right here. So you can plug it into your car and then you plug it in right here. And then you also get your solar connection right here. So you plug it in right here and then you have your solar connection as well right here. So you can charge it up via solar. And then as far as your controls go on the front, to turn it on, you have your power button. So you just turn it on and on here, it'll show you all of your basic controls. Right now, as you can see, it's at 28% battery and you have all of your basic you know, things on here that you need to see. So it'll tell you how long it'll be able to run. So if nothing's plugged in here, it'll, it'll last 96 hours, which is pretty awesome on its own. Um, and then you have you know, your output and your input. So once you are charging it up, it'll show your input. Once you're using something, it'll show your output as well. And then it'll update you know, depending on what you plug in here. Um, it'll update for how much longer you have in your battery percentage and everything. And then when you want to use your AC power or DC power, all you do is you just click AC power or DC power. Once those lights are turned on right there, you're able to plug these in and you're able to use it. But that's pretty much everything on the front. And like I said earlier, we'll run some tests in a little bit. You guys can see the power on this, but going over on the side here, here's what you have on the side. You have, you know, your fan over here to help keep it cool. Um, you know, while it's running and everything. And then here you have your charging ports as well. So you have an AC input right here. And this can input up to 1440 watts. So it can charge it in about from 0% to 80% in about 45 minutes, which is pretty awesome, pretty fast. As far as 100%, it's a little bit over an hour. Um, so that's pretty much similar to a lot of the other ones out there. 
but you know 45 minutes to get to 80% is pretty awesome that's very fast and then right here you have your overload protection as well and then going back to the solar this has a max input of 500 watts of solar input so that's pretty similar to like EcoFlow's 1000 watt battery capacity battery as well I know anchor or the anchor Solix C1000 has up to like 600 watts of solar this one has 500 watts just like the Delta 2 so with that solar input if you put the max input 500 watts and it's a sunny day you should be able to charge us in about you know, three-ish hours or so, you know, give or take, depending on how sunny it is and stuff like that, which is pretty awesome. You know, if you were camping or outside three hours, I mean, you could go do an activity, go hiking and three hours, you know, you're going to be able to have this thing fully charged and ready to use at nighttime, which is pretty awesome. And then going over here to the other side of the power station, you don't have much. You just have the fan right here. And then on the back of the power station, you don't have anything. You just have information about the power station, you know, the specs and stuff. And then right here on the top, you actually have your handles. So you have two pretty bulky handles, which is awesome, which makes it you know, really easy to carry around. It has kind of silicone material on it, which is nice. And then you also have a wireless 15 watt charger as well. So you can put your phone on here and charge it wirelessly, which is a pretty awesome feature as well that I like. You know, some power stations don't have that, like the Delta 2 does not have that. The Anchor Solix 1000 doesn't have that. So that's a pretty awesome feature that they included. And then before we get into the test, one last thing I wanted to mention is this does have UPS as well or interrupted, uninterrupted power supply. So basically that means you can plug this into like an outlet on the wall and then you can plug something into here. And then if the power were to go off in your house directly, you know, this would turn on and be able to power your device like a CPAP machine, you know, breathing machine, things like that. And it has 20 second or 20 millisecond UPS. So it's super fast, um, which we'll actually test that out as well. It's so like if you were watching TV, you know, 20 milliseconds, you shouldn't even really be able to notice it flicker. Um, basically, it should transfer over to this device pretty, really quickly, which is awesome. And speaking of UPS, the first test I wanted to run is just that UPS or some people call it pass-through power because essentially you're charging up the power station and using it at the same time. But I want to show you guys, so right now I have this plugged in to this desk actually, and there's actually a switch on it where I can just turn off the power that gets to this desk. So I have it plugged in right here. As you can see, it's charging up right now, um, 850 watts, it's climbing up. And then right now, 45 or like about 40 watts are being used to power this computer. So this computer only works if it's plugged in. So I have it plugged in right here. And like I said, it's using about 40 watts and the input right now, 856 watts. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn it off. So I have the switch back here. I'm going to turn it off and I'm going to see what happens to the computer. So my hands on the switch right here and let me turn this on so you guys can see. So boom. Where's the switch? Boom, I just turned it off. And as you can see, nothing happened. So right now, now there's zero watts being input into the power station because it's off. Let me turn it back on. And you'll see, boom, it's starting to charge up again. And look at the computer, nothing happens to it. Boom. So the UPS does work really well. You know, nothing happens. You don't even notice a flicker on the screen. Super fast. And it's able to have that pass through power. So if there was a power outage and the power went off, you know, directly your device would start being, would still be powered by the power station and you'd be good to go. All right, now for the first test, I just wanted to show you guys a pretty basic test because this power station that is, is made to power, you know, things a lot more powerful than laptops, things like that. But it can power this thing for a pretty long time. So I want to show you guys, I have my tablet plugged in right here. So you can see it's charging. I have the computer plugged in right here. It's powering it on. And then I also have my laptop being plugged in right here. And it's actually out of battery right now so it's not turning on but I'll show you guys right here when it turns on as you can see it is charging as well and then also I'm going to show you guys the uh, wireless charger right here so as you can see I'm going to put it on and you got to kind of find the sweet spot boom as you can see now it is charging so now I have four different devices charging right now and as you guys can see 99% battery I charge it up to full and it's going to be able to charge these devices. There's not a lot of output, only about a hundred or it's fluctuating between 80 to hundred watts of output. So not a ton with these devices. As I said, they're pretty small, but you're going to be able to run it for about 10 ish hours. And now I'm going to show you guys this light in the background. So I'm going to plug it in to just to show you guys that you can use DC and AC power at the same time. And boom, the light turns on as well. So I'm running different five different devices at one time and it's running this thing with no problem at all. I mean, it's not a lot of wattage, it's only about 100 watts of continuous. 
So we can go all the way up to 1800 watts, which we're gonna test that now. We're gonna go a little bit higher and show you guys. All right, so for the next test, I wanted to show you guys a 65 inch TV. How long can this thing power that? Obviously it's not gonna be a full test. I'm not gonna wait and see, but I'm just gonna see what it shows on the power station because it's pretty accurate. And obviously this isn't an emergency item, but you know, if you didn't want to power your TV or if you're camping or something, this is kind of gonna give you an idea of like a projector. So I'm gonna plug it in right here. All right, so the TV cable is not that long enough, so I have to put it over here to the side, but I'm gonna plug it in right here. Boom, have it plugged in and the AC power is on. And now let's see what happens. I'm gonna turn the TV on. Looks like the light just turned on and we'll see how it changes. Looks like it's using 122 watts, 121 watts. And as you guys can see, the TV is now on now. So let's look down here and it looks like it's using, now it's using about 87 watts. So continuously, once again, no problem for this power station. Just wanted to show you guys. And it's going, because this is about a, a little bit over a thousand watt power station, as you can see, it's gonna be able to run it for about 10 hours. So if you have a 65 inch TV, obviously it depends on your TV, but this one in particular, you're gonna be able to run it for about 10 hours, which is a pretty awesome time. You know, if you were camping and you wanted to run a projector, watch movies, you definitely can with this thing for a long time, you know, all night, which is pretty awesome. All right, then for this next test, I wanna show you guys, you know, if you were camping and you wanted to cook something, like you wanted to bring a hot, you know, a hot plate, stove or anything like that, or even, you know, a toaster or anything like that, you totally can do it with this, or at least we're gonna test it out. So I'll turn it on, the AC power's on, and we're going to plug this in right here. And let's see, it turned on pretty immediately. As you guys can see, it's running 1,152 watts. So definitely under that 1,800 watt range. And you're gonna be able to power this continuously for about 0.8 hours, which is pretty awesome. Now we're gonna plug in the toaster though, do another test even more, and see if we can get closer to that 1800 watt range and see what happens. So, boom, we got the toaster as well. And as you can see, it's still on. And now we're actually a little bit above 1800 watts. So it's actually at 1876. So it's actually above the uh, maximum output right now. Um, and let's see how long it can run it because I think what it's going to do is it's going to actually lower the voltage so it can still run the devices, but it'll make it a little bit lower and we'll see. And with these both running at the same time, I don't know if you guys can hear the fans kind of kicked on, but you are running more power. It's a little bit louder, but about a half an hour you could run both these devices continuously and it's actually pretty impressive. It's still running it no problem at all. As you can see right here, it's still running it no problem at all. So that's pretty awesome to know. Um, it is even a little bit over 1800 and it's able to run it continuously. You know, usually the surge is only for, usually the surge is only about 30 seconds, but it's been running it longer than 30 seconds. It's still going strong. Now I'm going to try the other side just to see what happens to see if it, you know, kicks off or what happens. Okay. So now I just did that. Now I just put on the other side. And as you guys can see, it went over the 2000 watts and it had overload protection. So it actually turned it off. It turned this off as well. Um, so that's one cool thing that it has is if you do go over that, you know, 1800 watt range, way over it, um, it has that overload protection. It's going to automatically stop it, um, turn off that power to protect the power station from, you know, messing anything up or anything like that. So pretty cool, pretty cool to see how that works. And that's pretty awesome to see as well. You know, if you were camping, you definitely could run your stove. Uh, you just want to make sure it's under that 1800 watt range. But as long as it is, it's going to run them no problem. And for about an hour on this one specifically. All right. And then for this last test, I'm going to show you guys this full size fridge. This is a two sided fridge right here. So pretty big refrigerator. And we're going to do a test on the fridge because I feel like this is kind of what a lot of people want to know. This is what I wanted to know, wanted to know before I got this too. So I'm going to plug it in right here and we're going to see what happens right now. I just plug it in. It says zero Watts because the compressor is not on right now, but let me open the fridge. Oh, Oh, I actually forgot. I forgot. You got to click AC. So I click AC and now let's see what happens. The fridge is plugged in. It looks like it just kicked on. And as you can see right here, now it went up to 162 Watts. The compressor is not turned on right now because it was just plugged in. Um, but as you guys can see, when you open this up, the lights turn on and everything. 
So it's working when I open it, as you can see, 19, 18 watts right there. So that's just for the lights inside the refrigerator. But once the compressor kicks on, it'll go up again. And as you guys can see, it can run it pretty much no problem. All right, it looks like the compressor just turned on now, and now it's going at about 95 watts. So usually when, once it initially kicks on, it surges up really fast for like a second or two, and then it goes back to this kind of 93 watt range. So as you can see right here, with the compressor turned on and it's running, it'll be able to last about 8.6 hours. Now it's down 88%, so it's not 100%. So maybe a little bit longer than that, but once that compressor kicks off again, it's gonna be able to go a little bit longer than that as well. You know what, I decided to actually test the full thing for you guys in the same video, just cause it's a pretty long video. So I actually charged this thing up to 100% battery and I just plugged the fridge in right now. Right now it's saying about 10.1 hours being able to power this thing. Um, but I'm gonna actually run a test for you guys. So right now it's about 12 o'clock and I plug it in and I'm gonna come back, you know, a little bit later when this thing's close to zero and we're gonna see how long it was able to power this refrigerator. All right, we got a little update. We're about four, four and a half hours in and we're at 53%. So it looks like it's not gonna make 10 hours. It looks like it's gonna be about eight hours, but who knows? I'll wait to see and we'll see what it is at the end. All right, just another update for you guys. Right here, as you can see, it's 8.30. So we started at around 12. So it's about, it's been about eight and a half hours. This thing's still going strong. As you can see right here, it's showing about 8% left. So about a half an hour more to go. And right now the compressor's on. And right now the, um, and right now the fridge is going. So it's using about 162 watts continuous. Um, but yeah, it's looking about, it's looking like it's gonna be about nine hours. So we'll see how long it goes and I'll let you know when it's done. All right, guys, the power station, I just checked it, finally stopped. Now, as you can see, the output is at zero. So it's no longer able to power this refrigerator. And it is 11.07, we started at 12, 12.05-ish. And so it's been 11 hours. This thing's been able to power this refrigerator. This is a double-sided fridge for 11 hours. And that's pretty awesome in my opinion. I thought it was maybe gonna get 10 and it was able to get 11 hours, which is super impressive. So it could definitely power your refrigerator. And if it was even a smaller refrigerator, you had to go for longer. If it was a mini fridge, even longer, you know, this thing can definitely power your refrigerator. I just wanted to mention real quick too, something that was actually really interesting about that test with the refrigerator is that it, once it got down to 1% battery, it was able to power it for another hour actually. So I thought it was only going to last like nine and a half hours. And then once it hit 1%, it was able to take that all the way till, you know, till 11 PM. And so, and so that's something to know, you know, even if it's at 1%, there is a lot of reserve in there to last, you know, another hour or so. So that's how I was able to get to that, you know, 11 hour range. And I think that was pretty awesome. I don't know, pretty, pretty cool test. And Kind of interesting to see, you know, when it get down, gets down to 1%, it still has quite a bit left to go. All right, so I hope that can kind of help you guys see some of the features that this thing has, what it can do. As far as my overall review goes, I think this thing is awesome. The tests that I ran were amazing. As you guys can see, the refrigerator, you know, a full-size refrigerator, 11 hours. That exceeded my expectations. I thought I was going to get, you know, 9.5 to 10, and 11 hours is awesome. So um, this thing's going to be awesome for camping as well, for the outdoors. You know, you can power so many different things, you know, electric griddle, things like that, like I was showing. And it's still compact enough to where, you know, you can easily fit it in your trunk. You can easily take it with you on the go. And I think it's an awesome option in my opinion. You know, as far as some of the other power stations that I've been able to use and review, I think it's definitely compares with the best in the game. This thing is awesome. And if you guys are looking for a portable power station in the 1000 watt range, definitely recommend checking this out. Really good quality and works super well in my opinion.